Hi, and welcome to the next lecture part on uh, linear classifiers. So, um, linear classifiers are an important subclass of um, classification models. Many of the simpler classification models are actually of this type. Yeah? Um, and some of the more complex classification models, um, for example, like support vector machines, are built on top of linear classifiers, so we can often kind of um, see um, linear yeah, classifiers as a subcomponent of more complex systems. So it's um, interesting um, to study them as a basic case. And in this lecture part here, I want to formally define what I mean with a linear classifier. We have already seen visually what this could mean. So in uh, one of the previous parts, I uh, have defined what I mean with a decision region and the decision boundary. And the, when I visualize this, um, we have already seen that some of these decision boundaries, they looked like lines or hyperplanes and um, some looked um, more like uh, quadratic or nonlinear structures. And we now want to describe exactly this um, yeah, through maths and the formal definition. So I will now call any classifier a linear one if I can specify all of its scoring functions fk either directly as a linear formula yeah, so some some vector of constants transposed times the feature vector plus some um, intercept um, or bias term bk or if I can do the same thing um, after applying a rank preserving monotone transformation to my um, scoring functions. And the reason why I'm allowing myself this more general definition with this uh, rank preserving monotone transformation is that if I only care about class assignments and not posterior scores or posterior probabilities, then I only care about yeah, the ordering of the scores for, um, conditioned on a specific observation. Um, and I don't really um, care about the, the absolute values themselves, right? So um, if you again remember this uh, definition of the decision boundary and the decision, uh, this, this decision region, these things don't change. Uh, they, they are completely um, the same before or after such a monotone transformation and they don't change. Um, and this is the reason why we are allowing this here in this, um, in this definition. And we can now easily show that for um, that the decision boundary between two classes i and j is actually a mathematical formal hyperplane if we have a linear classifier in front of us. So for every x where there is a tie in scores, the following holds with equality, right? So f i of x must be the same as f j of x. And um, if this is in a you know, completely monotonic, strictly monotonic, we um, um, can apply this to, 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 the bo to both sides of this equation here. And then j of f i of x is going to be the same uh, as g of um, f j of x. Uh, if and only, and if this holds, uh, and by definition, this here holds, if and only if w i transpose times x plus b i is the same as w j transpose times x plus b j. And by just rearranging terms a little bit, we can see that this guy holds here exactly if and only if this guy here holds. And this is just the um, mathematical form of a hyperplane. Uh, so all points um, for which a tie in scores exists for class A, I and J, uh, these, these points will live exactly on this hyperplane here. And visually, um, this would look like this. We have seen this before. These would be linear decision boundaries a linear decision boundary separating two classes, and this would be a potential nonlinear 
decision boundary, which I could not describe um, uh, with a linear classifier in the original feature space.